Round three it is. Nino Benvenuti defending the middleweight champion. Dog trunks, the red trunks. Emil Griffith in the white trunks, the former champion. Now Griffith is beating Benvenuti to the punch with good punches. Mauling on the inside. <laughs> that time, Benvenuti beats to the punch. for 15 rounds here at Shea Stadium. Pretty good crowd considering the weather. We've had no report on the attendance, however. Griffith has been getting off quicker than Benvenuti in the fight so far. Roundhouse right that got in there by Benvenuti. Tommy Walsh, the referee. punches have not been as clean or as crisp as they were in the last fight so far. About 20 seconds left in this round. And Jim. Good deal of roughing in that round. Uh, and just right at the end, as Don pointed out to you, when they were growling at each other, a pretty good indication of exactly the way this fight has been going. We're looking at Emil Griffith's corner right now. Uh, Griffith has not been taking any chances against Benvenuti's longer reach. Every time that Griffith has gotten in close and has been a little bit off balance or has gotten stung with a punch, he's been content to reach up there and grab and hang on. Benvenuti, on the other hand, effective at long range, doesn't quite seem to know what to do with Griffith when he's moving in on him. He hasn't been able to shorten up his punches. This is a little bit surprising because, as Don pointed out, he dumped Griffith the last time around with a beautiful short-range uppercut. It's a good punch for him. As a matter of fact, again, Don said that he had brought back the uppercut to boxing. So far, he hasn't been able to get it off with any degree of regularity here. As a matter of fact, we haven't even seen him set for it one time. It has been a very tough, roughing, in-fighting type of workout so far. They are fighting like they don't like each other at all, and it could be an interesting night, Don. Incidentally, Jim, I noticed that Chicky Ferrara, who did such a fine job in Benvenuti's corner the last time, is not with him tonight. And uh, if there's a bad cut, who knows? Round four. Benvenuti, the red trunks, the dark trunks, Griffith in white. Tommy Walsh tells the champion no healing on the inside. Benvenuti is pot shotting and doing it well in this round.
both boys have good equipment, a good left jab. Both probably hit harder with their right hands. They both have good left hooks. Ben Venuti can turn a jab into a good hook, by the way. Griffith scored well with the head a moment ago, as you saw. And as a result of the uh, butt by Griffith, Ben Venuti is cut under the chin. Benvenuti with the head, and he comes out smiling. This fight is not as classic as the previous one between the two, but it's more bitter. There's no question about that. almost over. It's a real rough one, isn't it? Here's the foul. How about it, Jim? No doubt about the fact that the hardest blow of the fight tonight has been that headbutt by Emil Griffith. I'm not saying it was an intentional butt. He was moving in and was down very low. He straightened up underneath Benvenuti and split his chin. And so Benvenuti has taken the first real hard one of the night. Just a little cut underneath the chin. Again, not a serious one. He has been bleeding a little bit from the nose from about the second round on. It has been what they used to call a bit of a pure sixer, although the, puni the punching, frankly, has not been nearly as good as it's been led to expect. Uh, it's still early, of course. And perhaps after they work out all their hatred for each other, they'll be better fighters. This is Griffith's corner now, so far showing no marks at all. And again, content to take that one or two quick outside punches and move inside against his opponent with a longer reach. Ben Venuti is the champion, of course, and Griffith is going to have to, by the very nature of things, come to him a great deal more often than Ben Venuti will have to go to him. It's just got to be that way because champions always go down the hard way and lose fights the hard way. You've got to take it if you're the challenger. Here's Don. Round five of the 15-round middleweight championship bout. Champion Nino Ben Venuti of Trieste, Italy. Dark trunks, red trunks. Emil Griffith and White. Benvenuti moving a little more now as Griffith is pressing him. Those jabs are short. Tommy Walsh, the referee, says, let's fight. is getting impatient at the action. <laughs> Neither boy has gotten his rhythm yet for the fight. I would say that Griffith is a bit over-anxious, and that's throwing both of them off. One minute left in round five of the 15-rounder. Benvenuti 
is scoring here on the inside. Benvenuti bleeding hard from the nose. A real hard uppercut by Benvenuti. Good left hook. Almost over. <laughs> All right, Jim, round eight coming up. <coughs> coming up to the halfway mark of this 15 round bout at Shea Stadium. For the middle of the champion, the dog with the red trunk. Benvenuti was finding Griffith well with the jab. but the hook was good. And good jab by Griffith. Griffith having a good round. Round of the fight. <laughs> Round almost over. Round 12, and, and again in Griffith's corner, Gil Clancy screams at him, go in and finish him, pick up the pace, keep the pressure on him. The Benvenuti's corner is a little too far away for us to hear what was said over there. for Griffith. No knockdown.
Lee with a good third here. Less than a minute to go here in round 12. by both fighters. Griffith is going right hand crazy as he did in the previous fight when he scored a knockdown. It was a flash knockdown. Fourteen half over. There's no question in my mind that regardless of how the fight goes, Griffith is much the fresher of the two at this point. Less than a minute to go in this round. Griffith is much improved over their previous fight, and Benuti, Ben Benuti is not as good up to now. Only seconds left in round 14. Bell and Jim. Griffith scored with a good short left hook off his left jab, then Ben Venuti came back with a good hard right cross, so they're just about even as far as the punching power goes. One of the reasons that Griffith is the fresher man here, as far as we were able to see from ringside, is the fact he simply hasn't been throwing that many punches. And he's been throwing almost none from long range, and so there's been very little of this missing. And Don pointed out during one of the earlier fights that any fighter will tell you that missing a punch takes just about as much out of you as getting hit. And Griffith simply hasn't been throwing that many. When he has been throwing them, he's been moving in and has been able to shorten up. Now, a lot of the punch have been catching Ben Venuti on the body. Griffith also, up until that round, made almost no use out of his right hand. 
He has been strictly a left-handed fighter tonight, and this is no knock at him because obviously he's been scoring and scoring extremely well. This is Griffith's corner, and Gil Clancy for, is not yelling at him this time. He's, he's encouraging him. Don, it could be because there's only one more round to go, but anyway, the diatribe has stopped. There's round 15. Referee Tommy Walsh has them touch gloves, and they do so briefly. the 15th and final round. Benvenuti bothered almost from round one by a bleeding nose. That was solid by Griffith. over. Ben Benuti trying to end it with one shot. There's a minute left to go in the fight. Scoring in New York again on a round basis with a supplementary point system if the rounds come out even on a card. Ten seconds now, there will be no knockout. There's the final bell. Now they're not mad at each other anymore. Okay, Jim. Emil Griffith's handlers in the ring now aren't going to wait for the vote of the referee and the judges the way they're rushing around their man to congratulate him. And it's hard to believe this is the same group that was yelling so loud at their man just a little while before. Things are comparatively subdued over in Nino Benvenuti's corner as the handlers have got their men surrounded, put on his, his robe now. Griffith's still parading around the ring. He finished, as Don pointed out to you, much fresher appearing than the other man, and of course this is one of the reasons why fight decisions go one way or the other. Ring generalship, the man who finishes in the better position, the man who lands the better punches. There are all kinds of factors that will sway the referee and the judges. And this one is one of the tougher ones to judge. This is a fight which started out to be a real roughhouse affair with very little good clean punching outside of that left jab by Emil Griffith. They sharpened up both men along about the middle rounds when almost an unwritten agreement seemed to have been made that they weren't going to do uh, anything at all except to fight well. It looks apparently that they'd forgotten all about the roughhousing. We're just deciding to go on left and right hand combinations. But then again, down toward the latter end of the fight, it became a sort of a standoff with Griffith using that left hand almost exclusively. Very few combinations thrown by either man. And when they'd missed the combination attempts, the few that they did try, they'd just grab each other and move into, uh, get across the ring, into the ropes, into one of the corners, and wait for the referee to break them up. This was not perhaps as good a classic fight as the first one, but it was a very rough one. It was a fight that was just about as tough as you can possibly have. 
Both these men are going to know that they were punched tomorrow, but good. And right from the beginning, almost from round one, the stinging left jab by Emil Griffith made breathing a little bit of a job for champion Nino Benvenuti. Losing a championship on a decision is always a thing that comes very, very hard to fight fans, to fighters, to judges, and referees. But a good many have been lost that way. A good many have been decided that way, including that one by Emil Griffith. Here's Johnny Addy. Vote judges, Joe Eppy and Johnny Dren. They both have it the same way. Nine, five, one even for Griffith. Griffith is the winner. Referee. Griffith is the winner. Referee Tommy Walsh scores it seven rounds each and one even points, seven points each. The referee Tommy Walsh calls it a draw. The winner by majority vote and once again the middleweight champion of the world, Emil Griffith. Well, there you have it, Emil Griffith regains the middleweight championship and continues his undefeated skein as a challenger. Now in five title bouts as a challenger, he has been victorious. It was a, a majority decision. Joe Eppy and Johnny Dran, the referee, uh, rather two of the judges, Eppy and Dran, had it by wide margins. Nine for Griffith, five for Benvenuti, and one even. And the referee, Tommy Walsh, had it exactly even, seven rounds for each battler, one round even, and seven points for each battler. A very happy group in the center of the ring, Howard Albert, Gil Clancy, the co-managers, Sid Martin, the handler of Emil Griffith, Bernard, his cousin, and Emil Griffith has regained the middleweight championship, and now we wonder what is going to happen in the future, Jim. John, a question for you about the near pass. In a fight like this, where there's so much roughhousing in the early rounds, can it considerably be, uh, conceivably be part of the man's strategy? It was obvious to me, at least, that Griffith came out that way. He did a lot of holding, he did a lot of infighting, a lot of head and shoulder work. Do they start out to do this thing? Can it help them with the fight? Well, it, it can help. I'm not a mind reader, Jim, and I don't know what Griffith had in mind, but... Uh, uh, it, it can help, there's no question about it. A, a man is finally trained as Benvenuti and a, a classic boxer can be thrown off stride. Now, I'm not saying that happened. I'm not saying it was Griffith's intention, but it can happen. So the new middleweight champion of the world is Emil Griffith. The 15-round fight at Shea Stadium tonight, and the weather held off. It had been threatening all day long. At one time, the mist blew in. It looked like we could have some trouble, but we finished up under fairly fair skies. That about does it from New York City for tonight, from Shea Stadium, for Don Duffy and myself, this is Jim Gordon saying good night. <laughs>